you all. Buenos dias. Magandang umaga. Welcome to my Chamber of Chakras and thank you for joining me on another episode of Astro Affirmation for January 29, 2024. Oh my gosh, we're at the end of the month already. Yes, three more days and it's February. But today is Mindful Monday. Yes, everybody. The moon rules the day, pushing and pulling the ebb and flow of our emotions. Yes, be mindful of others' feelings and use your intuition to make wise decisions on what to say and do. Yes, that's Mama Magic 369's advice for today. Kong Shifu says, live every breath you take to the fullest and stay in the eternal now. Kong Shifu is another name I adopted for myself when I was going through my transition stage. You know, that phase from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Oh yeah, I thought it was the end, but it was just the beginning of a new life and state of being. I learned that it's all a matter of perspective. Yes, change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. That's a quote from Dr. Wayne Dyer, RIP. Yes, it's true. I vouch for the authenticity of the message that you create your own reality. Yes, the stories we tell ourselves project onto the screen of our lives. The problems we face outside of us are symptoms of dis-ease within us. Dis-ease. Look inside of you first, and then you can investigate what's going on inside without judgment, okay? Just observe. Yes, meditate, merging the past and future into the present moment. Fix what's broken inside first and make the necessary adjustments to level the playing field. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, balance your inner world by bringing your chakras into a new level of equilibrium where you can see a higher perspective and states of consciousness, right? I know there are those of you out there who think my message is bullshit, but what can I say about that? I am a Taurus, the bull, after all. Yeah, I know a guy who happens to be Capricorn, the goat, who said that to me. Bullshit. <laughs> When I was talking about astrology in his presence, I was like, meh. <laughs> but all I can say at this point is look at him with your third eye chakra. You know what I'm saying? See that bendy between the two eyebrows? Yes. Use your wisdom and intuition to respond and your psychic powers to stay in, in the course, you know? Stay on your righteous path. No, I'm not giving you the bird. No, on the contrary, the middle finger has gotten a bad rap, but it is said that it is the, the Z-axis of the hand, okay? Look, the thumb is the X-axis. The index finger is the Y-axis, right? Right? And then the middle finger is the Z-axis, right? It's pointing to you. Yes, the Z-axis of the hand. The middle finger shows depth. Depth. <laughs> it 
It represents the truth. Responsibility, balance, and the human soul. Yes, so connect with spirit for divine blessings. Yeah, the Aztecs use the middle finger to connect to spirit for divine blessings. So next time someone gives you the bird, wave and smile. Say, God bless you. <laughs> Love you. Okay. Anyway, all right. So Monday, moon day starts another week of astral affirmation. Let's set the mood by burning this sandalwood incense. Okay. For the third eye chakra to clear the space, cleanse it from negative energy, right? Oh, shining one, shine your heavenly light and dispel all darkness in this space inside and out. Yes, the man got that from Walmart yesterday, among many other miscellaneous items. Yeah, he went super grocery shopping yesterday. And let's also light this cocodor. I got my delivery of cocodor tea lights from Italy yesterday. It's lavender garden scented tea light. So let's burn that also. And let's light it up. Okay, put it in our little teacup. For the crown chakra. Yeah. Monday vibes the emotional tone to set for the rest of the week by following your intuition and your heart to step into your true potential. What are your intentions for the days to come? Make them positive. Get clear about what you truly want to achieve in the coming days. Make magic happen. Turn that moodiness into motivation. Yes, move those sluggish feelings physically and put that energy in motion. Okay, bring it out, all right? That said, let us sing our theme song to join our spirits into one. Here we go. some coffee talk because I got some stuff to say. Yes, grab a cup of whatever and let's spill some tea. <laughs> yes, I did a lot of clean ting and sanitizing over the weekend. Yeah, because of that new virus going around, that chest cold flu. My daughter, TLC, has the worst of it. So I have to protect my vulnerability by being vigilant about exposure to germs and bacteria. Yeah? I washed my clothes with bleach and mopped the floors with antibacterial Mr. Clean. Oh, yeah, I went OCD on it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and I also finished crocheting this mandala. I showed you this before when it was just the central piece and then I shared it again when I got a little bit further, but now I've completed it. Check it out. Yes, and it, it'll stretch out when I put it on the hoop, but I'm still waiting for the 20 inch hoop to come in from Amazon. But this, this here is mandala I crocheted with Wizard of Loops and she calls it Belle, B-E-L-L-E, -E, as in beautiful. Yeah, I'm just waiting on the 20, 20 inch hoop to arrive today so I can frame it and show you a better view of it tomorrow. But in the meantime, I am continuing this new Wizard of Loops mandala called Mountain Buttercup. I shared this with you also last week and I couldn't continue it because she hadn't installed the part two. So she's already installed it and I was able to continue. And look how the yarn um, gradually changes colors. This is the color of what? This here is indigo, the color of the third eye chakra. Okay, and then it's deep purple. Ah, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> yeah, so my chamber of chakras is getting full again with mandalas ready to give away on our Noche Buena Christmas this year here at the Big Blue House. Yes, look at these most recent mandalas I hung over. It's over there. I hung over the picture of me and the man. You see? You see up there? There's a picture of me and the man, and then there's three mandalas up there on the wall. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh. The holy trinity of mandalas. Okay, so today the moon is in Virgo. My symbol for Virgo, Moon in Virgo, everybody. Yes, yeah, so all you Virgos out there. Yes, you Cindy, New Miley. <laughs> Open up and receive the oil of anointing pouring down from the core of your brain. The land of milk and honey. The pituitary gland is secreting the milk and the pineal gland is secreting the honey and combining it into a sacred secretion. The cerebrospinal fluid, let it freely flow down your spine and take root at the base to sprout and grow and develop into the truest of who you are so that you can live up to your fullest potential. Yes, Miley, I'm your second Filipino friend to call you Miley. <laughs> Virgo is the sign of becoming perfect, just as your Father in Heaven is perfect. As Jesus Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount, yes, read for yourself in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, holla, yes. So it's a waning gibbous moon, which means the moon is no longer fully illuminated, right? We just had that full moon. Right? So now it's starting to look smaller, right? It's starting to disappear. Okay, so it's going over here. So this phase, the waning gibbous phase, is between the full moon and the half moon. It's a time of introspection, gratitude, and release. Yes, letting go of bad habits. I have a lot of bad habits that I'm not ready to let go of yet. You know, like smoking cigarettes and 
picking the flakes of skin off of my psoriatic feet. Yes, but I have let go of negative thinking and limited beliefs, which is much better, I think. Yeah, I've released some of my true, true, um, my trust issues. And I converted my paranoia into belief in divine protection. Yes, trusting God in spite of the world of lies and deception. Yes, the ruling chakra of the day is the third eye chakra, the sixth chakra of our seven primary chakras, right? Spinning sphere of energy in our spine that radiates the color indigo. Dark blue, navy blue, deep purple. The third eye chakra, the ajna in Sanskrit, okay? It means commands, perception beyond wisdom. Our sixth sense, extrasensory perception, the ability to see beyond the visible and behind the veil of illusions, right? It's located between the brows, this dot is called a bindi, the feminine form of the indicator of the third eye chakra, corresponding with the masculine indicator, the puyo, hair swirl at the top back of the head called bindu. So bindi, bindu, okay? And they're markers indicating where the sh those chakras are. This one indicates where the third eye chakra is, which is right here in the, eye, in the area of the eye of Horus where the pineal gland sits, right? In the core of the brain. So that indicates where the third eye chakra is. The puyo, which is that, that dot, I guess, or that blank spot in the back of the head, top back of the head. Okay, indicates the position of the Bindu Chakra. Yeah, the Bindu Chakra is colorless, transparent. It's an invisible chakra, but it's there. Beneath the scalp, under the point where the spiral of hair begins, right? So see, here's the close-up of the view of the spiritual chakras. The throat, the third eye the bindu, the crown, and the soul star chakra, okay? The fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth chakras. I believe this is the eighth chakra, and that one is also the eighth chakra. The bindu chakra and the soul star chakra are the eighth chakra, because the moon and the sun. Remember I was telling you that the other day? Yeah, because Bindu, the Bindu chakra is the ethereal eighth chakra, okay? It's in the body, right? Okay, here's a symbol for, for the Bindu, right? It's a crescent moon with a dot on top, okay? Because it's the moon center, right? While the crown with a million rays or a thousand petals, some call it, you know, the center of a million rays. It's like the sun, right? On the other hand, the soul star chakra, which is above the crown, right, is the divine eighth chakra. So this is the ethereal eighth chakra, and this is the divine eighth chakra. That's what I think. But the symbol for the soul star chakra is a glowing bright white star with a Merkaba in the center. It looks like, kind of like this. See, it's a star. It's kind of like an asterisk. It's got um, 10 radiating, but there's more than 10 because it's kind of lacy, 
so it's like shiny. Anyway, there's a Merkaba in the center of it. Looks kind of like this. Yeah. So the Soul Star's color is brilliant white, pure light, pure consciousness, the presence of all light frequencies. So all the color of the rainbow emanates from there. That's why it's white. It reflects all the colors. Yeah, some sources say it's the seat of the soul, the place of omnipresence, the gateway of divine love and spiritual wisdom. Hence, the Sanskrit name Vyapini, Vyapini for the soul star chakra, the heart of the universe. Just as the earth star chakra and the root chakra are the home base of our ethereal self, the soul star chakra is the foundation of our divine self, the union of our higher self and God. So here's how I understand it, okay? This chakra system, how it works. Earth energy, right? Earth energy comes up from plugging the root chakra to earth star chakra, right? Which connects our current to the magnetic core of Mama Gaia. So earth energy flows up the sacral, the solar plexus, right? And then the heart chakra transforms that energy, those dense energies of earth, right? And bridges them to rise to the spiritual chakras, which are these chakras, right? Yeah, the heart chakra takes us to church. Yeah, take me to church. Yes, and then we worship and praise with a true blue throat chakra, turning on the indigo light of the third eye chakra to pray, meditate. Awakening the subconscious mind, which triggers the bindu, right? Worship, pray, meditate. Bindu drips the nectar of immortality, which should be caught. Catch it with your throat chakra to keep the fountain of youth flowing throughout the body. Because if you let it go down to the solar plexus chakra, the fire there will burn it off and, you know, it will waste it, right? So in order for it to be used completely by the body as a beneficial thing, you need to catch it here. Speak the truth. Communicate clearly, you know. Keep it flowing, right, throughout the body. So... When that happens, the crown chakra opens up, right? It lights up to connect with the cosmos. It's thousands of violet petals open as consciousness expands towards infinity, receiving inspirational download from the soul star chakra, our access to the Akashic records right? The collection of information from all that there is. Yeah, all of emotions, ideas, everything that has happened, past, present, future, are all collected in that cosmic library. And the soul star chakra is where we can access that, as well as our past lives, too. Yeah, because the soul star chakra is our truth and purpose, our soul purpose, the center of our past lives and life mission. You know what I'm saying? Yes, the soul star chakra is the extension of the crown chakra, just as the earth star chakra is an extension of the root chakra. Okay? You dig? Okay, so to summarize, 
The crown chakra is our individual connection to the spirit in the sky. That's where I go when I die. When I die and they lay me to rest, I'm going to go to the place that's the best. Yes, the crown chakra is our connection. It's like an ego-based connection to spirit, okay, for guidance in this physical realm. While the soul star chakra okay, is the metamorphosis of the caterpillar into a butterfly, you know, our oneness with all that there is. So this connects and that sews together the two sides, okay? Okay, so in other words, the crown chakra connects the two sides and the soul star chakra sews them together, mixing our dualistic nature together and transforming it into one being, completely merging with all that there is. Get small? I hope so. Take a break <clears throat> from your busy schedule and pause a while to take in the moment, okay, of silence, of stillness. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed and close your eyes. Relax. By breathing deeply, observing the rise and fall of your chest as you inhale and exhale. Feel the beating of your heart as air is pumped in and out of your lungs. Hear the sounds inside and outside of you without judgment. Slow your mind and be still. Get in the gap between your thoughts and stay in that space where there is no sense of self, just the state of being. One with all and all. And chant the mantra. All for all seven chakras. Okay, here they are. I wrote them down. Lam vam ram yam ham sham om. Unblock them. Unblock them from negative energies. Remember, it's, this is our central light beam. This represents the central light beam in our core. It's like a, a column of light, right? That encases the seven primary chakras. Make sure that it's clear. Unblock them from negative energies through positive thinking, looking on the bright side of things. Shine the light of your core to its maximum capacity by releasing dark thoughts and heavy feelings. Release it. Lay your burdens down at the foot of the cross. It is finished. Jesus Christ has overcome the world. So turn on your heart light. Let it shine wherever you go. Let it make a happy glow for all the world to see. Turn on your heart light. Yes. Neil Diamond, 1982. I remember Father Sullivan. He was a young, handsome priest at our first parish, Epiphany Catholic Church in South El Monte. Yes, he was our youth group moderator who loved, just loved Neil Diamond. It was a lot of fun. He got us physically active through a jogging league called Leggers, where a group of youths jogged around Leg Lake every Sunday. Hated it. But you know, I don't run, right? I don't run. Why? Unless I have to, right? Ain't no pobo chasing after us. Ooh wee. What's up with that? What's up with that? Yeah. My Japanese ain't coming. 
Anywho, yeah, use wisdom and intuition to set the emotional tone for this week of transcending and ascending, right? Transcend the material world and ascend to a higher level of consciousness. Avoid taking sides, okay? Stay neutral. Take the middle way. Christ consciousness, remember? This is the place of the skull where Jesus Christ was crucified between two polar opposites, thieves, right? Both sinners, but one is too carnal, the other one's too spiritual, right? And the middle where Jesus was crucified, right, is balanced. It's the middle way, Christ consciousness, okay? So yes, take the middle way. Balance fear with faith and love. Okay? Yes, I leave you now with this Bible passage. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Yes. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. That's in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 11. That's all I have for you today. And once again, I honor God in you and me. Namaste.